Hi there, my name's Neil Morell. I'm the marketing manager for Dapol Model Railways and your host here on Dapol TV. If it's your first time visiting our channel, really big welcome to you. And if you've been here before, an equally large welcome to yourselves. Well, you might be wondering why I've got so much stuff all over my desk. Well, on the back of this video, I'm going to be having a chat with Howard Smith at BRM for the World of Railway virtual show. And most of these samples are out, so we've got something to talk about on their show. As you'll have noticed from the introduction card of this video, we're going to be talking about the O-Gage 122. We've had the production samples now, production is coming towards the end and they shouldn't be too much longer. Keep an eye on our website for more details when we get an exact delivery date. Let's head on over to the studio where we can see what we get in the box, how to get the model out and take a look at all the liveries on the turntable. Speaking of the turntable, these are the largest things I can possibly fit on it, so you are going to see a little bit more of the turntable than you might normally, and some of the lighting might catch the glazing and such like. The model comes in a sturdy, substantially sized box. When you've got the lid off, you're going to be presented with a set of very comprehensive instructions written by our technical manager, Andy. I strongly recommend giving them a really good read. There is also a set of head code decals. Under these there is a foam layer. This is going to come in handy later on. Within two small recesses in the packaging you will find a set of battery boxes. I'll show you how to fit these shortly. And an accessory bag which includes a selection of pipework for the buffer beam as well as a tool for extracting the DCC blanking plate. To remove the model, take hold of the Perspex plinth that it is attached to. There is a finger hole cut in the rubber to make this a little bit easier and gently remove the model from the box. Okay, time for the foam sheet to make a bit of a return. This is how I've been taking the models out of the box while I've been videoing them and photographing them and so far I've not damaged a single one. Take your model and turn it upside down and gently place the roof on the foam sheet. With a suitably sized screwdriver, whilst holding the Perspex plinth, undo the two retaining screws which go through the plinth and into the die cast chassis of the model. You can then remove the Perspex plinth and two screws along with the two die cast spacers. You then use the battery boxes supplied with the model to cover the die cast protrusions that extend from the underside of the model. Battery boxes come with a series of holes and pegs which fit into a corresponding set in the die cast chassis which helps with location. You may need to give them a bit of a squeeze just to make sure they locate properly. The class 122 was built by the Gloucester Railway Carriage and Wagon Company in 1958. 20 single powered cars numbered W55000 to W55019 and 9 trailer cars numbered W56280 to W56289 were manufactured. All of the Class 122 fleet was removed from revenue earning service, however several remained in departmental use. Eight Class 122s survive into preservation, including W55001 at the East Lancashire Railway, 
which was laser scanned to help produce this model. The DAPL class 121 and 122 models will have the following features. Although obviously we are looking at the 122 here today. A heavy die cast chassis for added weight and superior tractive effort. Dual motorised bogies with all wheel pickup. There will be DCC and DTC sound fitted options available. A lowered floor to minimise intrusion of the DCC speaker etc inside the model. Head code and destination boxes with removable glazing permitting numbers to be mounted behind the glazing. Separate grab handles on the passenger doors, separately etched grills for the guards windows. Interior detail inside the guards area with separate lighting. Exquisite passenger compartment detailing including period specific decoration on the seating. A high level of detail on the bogies and under frame of the locomotive. There are three buffer types, three exhaust types, two sides with higher passenger grab handles and lower passenger grab handles, two roof types, large and small box types, provision for three chassis types, additional side steps and varying under frame detail and flat single driver ended design. Independently controllable cab, passenger compartments, guard compartments and directional lighting. Easy access switches for controlling lights in a DC model. This model can also have multiple speakers fitted for those that desire sound. I'll include links to all the relevant catalogue pages and digest sections in the description below. Well I hope you've enjoyed this short video or at least found it useful. Stay safe, stay well, see you soon.